As an indecisive avid reader girly with a sizable collection of unread novels, I often find myself ruminating over my TBR, trying to decide which book is going to be perfect for my current mood. But I'll be changing that today because instead of me myself choosing the books for my upcoming seasonal TBR, I'm going to let my children do that for me. Yes, today I'll be letting my rabbits pick my summer TBR. I'm still going to use the TBR jar as I have two carts filled with unread novels, some of which I frankly don't want to read over the summer. And this way I still have a little bit of control over what I read. But for each prompt I pull out, I will choose a few books that fit said prompt, lay them out, and let the rabbits decide my fate. If all goes to plan, no books will be harmed in the making of this video. But uh, knowing my little troublemakers, that's... Uh... <laughs> That's wishful thinking. Speaking of the devils, let me introduce you to them. If I had to pick a favorite rabbit, Belle might be it. Not saying I do, but I'm also not saying I don't. <laughs> she was my first rabbit, and so she just holds a special place in my heart. And she is overall like the most perfect, well-mannered bunny. Now, I love this gal, but if Belle is that perfect girl next door, girl, Amber is that girl in high school that you avoid at all costs. Let's just say she has some behavioral issues, which, kind of relatable. You know, not everyone could go see a therapist as a child to work through their behavioral issues. Not that I would know or anything, or that I was that five-year-old with temper tantrums. Just in theory. Amber has been known to draw blood. Sorry, Liz. Though I do think it's kind of unfair that Amber is always cast as the villain. As she is not always a menace, she can be sweet sometimes. Named after Princess Luna from My Little Pony. Was I too old to be watching My Little Pony when I got her? Yeah, probably. Great show though, honestly. And I'm not ashamed to say that. Friendship is magic. <laughs> Some may view Luna as the runt. She is the smallest out of all of them and sometimes gets picked on, mostly by Amber. But I like to think of her as the underdog, or better yet, under bun. <laughs> Uh, good one, Sarah. She is a little more reserved than the other rabbits, but at heart is a sweetheart. All right, we're now going to jump back to past Sarah, picking the prompts and letting the girls go at it. I'm going to do this a times round, mostly because I don't have a lot of faith in my rabbits to choose books I actually want to read over the summer. Like, I want to read all of these, okay? <laughs> A book that gives poolside read. Do you know what I saw someone doing the other day? They were reading in the pool. They took poolside read to mean I'm going to read in the pool at the poolside with my book hanging over the lip of the pool. Y'all are getting brave, okay? <laughs> All right, for the choices, we have the escape room. What is more poolside than a poolside? Happy place, the beach read of 2023. <laughs> Keep your friends close, and just for the summer. We're gonna be using some papaya to place in the books. All right, I have the first victim set. Helper. All right, Belle, whenever you're ready, go get him. Go get him. Go get him. Come on. <laughs> Don't make me look bad. Come on. This might be an all day affair. Here we go. Here we go. She smells something. She's like a hound. Yes, go, Queen. Yes, go. Just for the summer, Abby Jimenez. You chose well. You chose well. Thank you, Sarah. I'm not doing that for each prompt, just a heads up. Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. I'm really excited about this one because I just hauled this in my last video, so it's been right there front and center on my radar. Abby Jimenez is one of my favorite, if not favorite, romance authors, and I just love so much the Party World series, so I am very happy that Belle chose this. I'm just gonna put the books Belle didn't choose in the corner. I'm gonna try to pick different books for each prompt because I wanna respect whatever reasoning their piece out of brains have for not wanting to pick those novels, but you know, I may, I may overlap because everyone can have laps in judgment sometimes. And we love growth, character growth. Booktube made you buy literally half my TBR. I have a book in mind and I cannot find it. Lovely. When you can't find your own book on a, your TBR card, that is when you know you have too many books. Oh, here it is. Okay. For round two, the options are Neon Gods, Once Upon a Broken Heart, An Anonymous Girl, and Pizza Girl. I'm showing her the treats and hoping she will behave herself. Isn't that right? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? I, I, I'm Amber, come back. Come back. Amber, Amber, Amber. All right, pizza girl it is. Amber definitely had a wide variety to choose from, but I guess the aesthetic 
Instagram worthy cover just really drew her in. I understand. Amber picked Pizza Girl by Jing Kwang Fraser. I first bought this book because I heard Jack Edwards talk about it a while back, but I believe this book revolves around a, the synopsis actually sums her up perfectly, a charming dysfunctional heroine who is 18, pregnant, and working in a pizza place where she becomes obsessed with one of her regulars, a stay-at-home mom who has become dependent on her weekly pizza deliveries. Something about that just really intrigues me. It's just such a unique premise that seems funny but also insightful and I want to immediately explore more of it. From three, an Ellen Hildebrand because I have an abundance of Ellen Hildebrand novels. So for this third prompt, here's the thing. I already had two Ellen Hildebrands in mind that I knew I wanted to read this summer, one being The Summer of 69 and the other being The Identicals, which I did not and do not currently own as I just plan on borrowing my mom's copy. But I decided that since I already knew I wanted to read both of them, I would just let a rabbit decide which one I would read first and use a random book as a stand-in for The Identicals. Oh, 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 okay. You kind of missed them. I think we may need to call in reinforcements. Okay, finally. Thank you, Belle. I love that my rabbits, or Belle? Luna, I, mm, we'll be sitting down and having a talk later. I love that Belle and I were on the same page as, this is the one I have already been thinking about reading first. I am particularly interested in these two Ellen Hildebrands because they both involve in one way or another Martha's Vineyard and I will be vacationing there later this summer. I have never been, but I am so excited, especially to see the nautical beach town atmosphere Miss Hildebrand so often depicts in her novels. What if I run into her? What if I run into Ellen Hildebrand? Oh my God. She lives on Nantucket, which is close to Martha's Vineyard. It could happen, okay? Oh my god, uh, this is kind of funny. I literally went down the other day, rabbit hole, on the Ted Kennedy and Chappaquiddick incident. I think that's how you pronounce it. I am not sure, but the synopsis literally mentions it, which is interesting. It's actually a pretty sad story. Not to go on a tangent, but basically, if you don't know what happened, the gist is, is that Senator Ted Kennedy allegedly <coughs> <clears throat> was drunk driving one night and he accidentally drove his car off of a bridge in Chappaquiddick, which ended up killing this woman who was a passenger in the car. Uh, so... Yeah, they actually made a whole movie about it recently. Anyways, this book is set in the 60s, hence the summer of 69. And we follow four siblings who reunite every year at their grandma's house and in Tucket. But this summer, only one of them is actually able to make it as one is trapped in Boston pregnant with twins. Another is taking a job on Martha's Vineyard and another currently deployed in Vietnam. So that along with all the secrets they're all hiding leads them to experience the drama, intrigue and upheaval of the 60s summer. Why am I like romanticizing? in my head summer in the 60s. Never mind that internet wasn't a thing or anything. I want a 60 summer. I just want to have a 60 summer. As the synopsis insinuates, this is a historical fiction, which will be a nice change of, play change of pace. Pace, Sarah. Enunciate, Sarah. <laughs> I'm planning on reading this one before my trip and then the identicals while I'm on vacation. I feel like that would be fun. A thick book, thick with three C's might I add. The choices for this round are Addicted After All and The Final Offer, both arguably longer than needed romances. The Change, whose girth is scarier than the subject matter. Oh, you okay there, Belle? I'm holding a rabbit if you uh, can't hear. I, I don't suggest holding a rabbit and filming at the same time. It's honestly a bit hard to do, but uh, we make do. And The Hobbit, which I don't know if I'd classify this as thick, but it's it's definitely hefty. Apparently, Belle is going to have to join my chat with Luna later. Oh, 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 that, that was not the, that was not the task. Addicted after all. Who would have 
skunk it, that Amber would be the best behaved rabbit in this video. Not me, that's for sure. I'm actually really excited that I got a book that's a part of a series, especially for the thick book prompt. As usually I need some type of push to pick up books that are in series, not because I don't like series, but because I tend to save them for when I need to read something that I know I'm going to like. But what ends up happening is that perfect moment never comes. And I'm in the middle of so many different romance series. So I just need to finish some of them. So then I can pick up other ones that I've been wanting to read, but I'm just like, no, Sarah, you cannot start any more romance series. You're, you just need to finish them. Just finish some of your romance series. Literally the only romance series I have 100% completed is the Twisted series. This is not good for my personal reading aspirations. This will be my next book of that manner, Lillian Lowe love. I am having like the time of my life right now. This is so fun. And I know some of you want to see the rabbits more. So I figured this video would be a good way to do that. A yellow cover, the color of summer. I think these are literally the only two books that I have that are yellow. Uh, I feel like two books though, like it's not a really a big choice. I could also do, this has some yellow, right? Yeah. I mean, Sure, why not? Again, the choices for this round are The Cat Who Saved Books, Finley Donvin Rolls the Dice, and Good Material. All right, Amber, what is it gonna be? Love to see that, love to see that. I'm telling you, Amber really pulled through. I do not need to tell y'all for the 10 millionth time how much I love the Finley Donvin series, my perfect cozy mystery series, but it's good that this novel was picked as again, that will push me to read it and not try to save it for that perfect moment. Prompt number six features a refreshment on the cover. I mean, like, is that blood splatter or spilled red wine? I'm kidding. I don't know, kinda looks a little fishy. What is up today? I am crazier than normal today. I swear I've only had one coffee. I don't know what's up. It's just one of those days. Okay, yeah, that works. All right, for this prompt I chose, a couple at table six with a nice glass of red wine on the cover. How to kill men and get away with it. Coffee. Nice. Murder in Retrospect. And The Lunar Housewife with more wine. Or as EA likes to say, juice. That's a little Sims reference for all my Simmers out there. Immediately goes to the corner. Luna, you're killing me. You're killing me, babe. At this point, I was just done with Luna shenanigans. I even tried to lure her with treats. That did not work. Usually all I have to do is merely pick up a bag and I'm going to have a stampede on my hands. Eventually she did come to me, but I had to heavily influence her decision. I didn't even care what she chose at this point. I just wanted her to pick one. A couple of table six it is. But surprisingly, she did go back for seconds. And I was so proud of her for that, that I decided to include that novel as well. Luna first picked with my help, a couple of table six, which again, I just hauled in my last video. I am very happy that I finally have a thriller on my TBR though. I don't know if my rap is good, my reading taste. I am going to need at least half of my books to be thrillers, okay? But then the book she went back for was Murder and Retrospect by Agatha Christie. My edition is very vintage. Like the pages literally look like they have been a part of an ancient novel that has been hidden away for the past 500 years. Oh my God, this was 95 cents. Back in the day when books were only 95 cents, wow. It's hard to believe that books were ever that cheap. People pay $30 for a hardcover nowadays. It's highway robbery, that's what that is. I got this for free though, ha, huh, 95 cents. I got it for free for my library during a free library book giveaway event that they had. My edition is so vintage that it even has the alternative title. I did not know that at the time of picking this up. I was just like, oh, an Agatha Christie I've never heard of before. Maybe because it now goes by Five Little Pigs. Now that summer's here, I feel like I have the mental capacity to read this type of literature. I am taking a few summer classes just to get ahead with some credit hours. So this will probably be a later in summer read. This is another Hercular Pro mystery, but this time Detective Perot is reopening a case to try to figure out if a woman claiming she did not kill her husband all those years ago is truly innocent. Based on that, the title, Murder in Retrospect, Makes sense. Five Little Pigs makes me think of the book, The Three Little Pigs and the Big Bad Wolf. I am very confused about why they changed the title. The only possible reasoning I can deduce from the synopsis is that there were also five other people who wanted the husband dead as well. Not really sure where the pigs come in. I guess that's a mystery for us to figure out. This is a mess. <laughs> An unread letter from the ABC challenge. I'll need to grab my journal. Here's my ABC challenge so far. I chose three again. I put back in good material. We've got Cassandra in reverse and Butchers and Blackbird. Uh, 
Okay, Butcher and Blackbird. Here I am talking about how I should not be starting any romance series, but Belle really went, no, you will be starting another romance series. And who am I to disagree? This is going to be interesting to read because I recently read the Mindfuck series, which gives off very similar vibes. I mean, I guess you could count the Mindfuck series as another romance series I've read, but then if I were to go by that logic, I would also count the Stemness novellas as this doesn't really matter, only to me. But this time, instead of a serial killer and a cop romance, we have a two serial killer romance. This just sounds like the romantic comedy of my thriller loving dreams. We are on our last prompt, sadly, a book that involves a vacation. I've got to put happy place back on the ringer. Uh, this is a how well does Sarah know the books on her TBR prompt. This one involves a vacation, I think. This is the Ruth Ware I meant to grab. I don't know what I was thinking. The Woman in Cabin 10. Then we also have The Fury and Happy Place. All right, Amber, make us proud. Just let her cook, let her cook, let her cook. <laughs> That feels so wrong to say that to a rabbit. <laughs> she just bit my book. When more than two people IRL have asked me if I've read a certain book, I should take that as a sign that I should read said book. So Happy Place is a book I will definitely be reading this summer. You can quote me on that. I've just been waiting for the summer months to pick it up. I am so in the mood for another Emily Henry novel. I've been having like book lovers envy. I've been envying my reading experience of book lovers and Emily Henry recently came out with another book. So I need to read this ASAP. Do I really need to go over what this is about? I feel like y'all have read it probably. <laughs> we basically follow a couple who have broken up, but they make a pact to pretend to stay together during their week-long vacation with their friends. Every book Emily Henry comes out with becomes the book of the summer. So I'm very excited to pick this up, possibly even her new release, but I'm telling myself I need to read this one first. Since I only have nine novels so far in the TBR, I am going to add a few just to fill out the summer TBR a bit more. And I also need more thrillers in my life. So I will be adding The Spare Room by Andrea Bartz. In this book, we follow a down her luck woman who rekindles a friendship with her childhood best friend and is invited to stay in her friend's spare room. And so she accepts and not only gets involved with her friend, but her friend's husband as well. And so life seems pretty good. She's living in a mansion. She's in a thruple until she discovers that the last woman they invited into the relationship is missing. Man, this just sounds so good and like such a Sarah thriller. And then I'm also going to add Jar of Hearts by Jennifer Hillier, which is actually one of the oldest books I own on my TBR in terms of how long I've owned it. I'm adding this one because I know that this is in part a courtroom thriller and one of the classes I'm taking this summer is a media law class. One might think that I would not want to read more law after reading law all day, but I don't know. Taking that class has just made me want to pick up more courtroom thrillers. I believe in this book we follow this girl who was somehow involved in her best friend's murder, but she was never arrested until now. She goes to jail, but then when she is released, copycat murders start popping up. And so she's like, whoa, 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 what's going on? Guys, it, I swear it was me this time. I've only read one Jennifer Hillier, Things We Do in the Dark, which I liked enough, but some people like love, love, love her work. So I'm looking forward to trying out another novel from her. And then lastly, Vengeance of the Pirate Queen. I figured I needed at least one fantasy to add to the TBR. And this has been one I've been meaning to get to. This is the third installment in the Daughter of the Pirate King series. What's interesting about this one is that I believe we follow not Elosa, the girl we follow in the other books, but one of her crewmates. That's an interesting choice. Trisha Levenseller, not exactly sure how I feel about that. It's been years since I've read this series, so I am probably due for a reread, but there are only so many hours in a day and so many books on my TBR, so. That will not be happening. Okay, let's recap. First we have Vengeance of the Pirate Queen, then Jar of Hearts, The Spare Room, Happy Place, Butcher and Blackbird, Murder and Retrospect, The Couple at Table Six, Finley Donovan, Rolls of the Dice. Have I not read that title until now? Addicted After All, Summer of 69, Pizza Girl, and then lastly, Just for the Summer. I'm pretty happy with this selection today. It's giving summer. I feel like we have a good variety. I think the rabbits did good. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed seeing the rabbits a bit more. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help me mention that a lot. You can also comment, interact, subscribe, all that fun YouTube stuff. I'd really appreciate it. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day, a fantastic start to the summer, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.